are my experiences. Um, I'm a Singaporean. Uh, yeah, that's me. I call this um, this title of speech uh, evolution. I have changed career, uh, changed direction of my fitness industry. I've been in this industry for 20 years. I know you guys are between 17 and 20 years old and I'm sure you guys are perplexed of what to do after this. I know most of you are here. Who are here who are truly interested to be here? Put up your hands, please. None. <laughs> so this is a compulsory class, am I correct? Okay, I understand you guys wanna go home and you know rest and then who are these people that comes up and talk and talk and talk. But I tell you something, as you grow older and if you wanna go into this industry, all the speakers, I came here when Andrew, Andrew was speaking about sports and um, uh, Daniel sp uh, speaking about cancer and Miss Didi who's very entertaining and very knowledgeable and also Adrian that's very sports specific. These are um, things that are talked about later on that you find that will be so useful. For example, we talk about injuries, right? So for injuries, when you go in any directions in sports specific, whether it's personal training, whether it's uh, aerobics, you are going to meet people with injuries. Cancer, you may have a friend, a family uh, member that will have certain special uh, diseases that is it's happening over and over again. And then when we talk about sports uh, specific, now you've got Spartan Race, uh, CrossFit, you know, so it's all related. And Ms. Didi, when she emphasized on her ev own evolution, working with communities, that's where we start, communities. At this age, I'm going back to giving back to the community. So let's talk about, I know I have um, pieces of paper, it's because, not because I hate technology and I'm old school and I can't read, so my font are like 48. So bear with me, okay? So I know you guys do not know who I am, and you shouldn't. Uh, my name is Lila, um, I am a Singaporean, I have to emphasize that because at the end of this slide you will understand why I keep emphasizing I'm Singaporean. Okay, I'm very, very nervous because I know that somewhere in your bag you have, um, you know, rotten eggs and you want to throw at me. Please, after I finish, then you can throw, okay? So, th these are the three things before I go on. Um, I, don't want, I don't want to take too much of your time. If, you, if I can impart something to you, these are the three things. Make sure you stay relevant in, your, in this changing times of fitness. Everything is changing. I remember uh, Jane Fonda, I know you don't remember that. Yeah, Jane Fonda was the first aerobics queen. So now we have Zumba, we have body combat, right? And also you make sure you specialize in your industry. For example, Les Mills, they are well known for body combat. Have you heard of Les Mills? They're from Australia, they're a very, very big company that invented body combat. Um, what else do you have? Uh, body pump. Have you heard of body pump? Okay, so do the research. So these are the things that you need to be relevant about. Market yourself. I remember when I first started, I was the first, I like to claim when I, you know, um, I was the first one with a picture on my name card, like a real estate agent, yeah? Uh, I was standing in front of a bar, but now my, <laughs> my, my card has changed. Now I, I have a fitness a picture on my card. Promote yourself uh, on social media. You guys are very lucky, you have social media, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter. Uh, when, I, when I was starting out, it was just word of mouth. So I have to be very, very credible so somebody else will pass my name on. So the third one. So you need to expand and evolve in this fitness industry. Uh, you will see what I mean as I as I go along with my slides. So all you have is my pictures, yeah? Uh, I don't have numbers, I'm sorry. Oops, even this, I messed up, so, so sorry guys. <laughs> Technology and me. Thank you, okay. So some, some of you uh, may call me uh, jack of all trades, master of none, probably. And probably you go like, oh my God, you know, she's an idiot at the end of this, this uh, session. 
So I've been described as an entrepreneur, business owner, Asia's top personal trainer. So we all like to claim we are, oh, we are top somehow, right? But we have to have credibility to be called something. So when you talk about, um, let's, let's talk about entrepreneur. <sighs> I'm very, very nervous. Hang on a second, guys. So being entrepreneur, these are the things that makes you an entrepreneur. You allow ideas that comes from your heart. That means passion, right? So how, much, how many of you have passions of you, what you're studying? Two. Perfect. At least two of you. The rest of you do not know, and it's okay because you're 18, 17, you're not supposed to know yet. Uh, yes. And it comes with a price, yeah? And you have to embrace failure also. So everybody look at us now, and all you see are success. But there were a lot of failures too. And through failing, we are allowed here, standing here talking to you of our experiences and our expertise. Also, I believe to be an entrepreneur, you have to allow possibility to feed your soul. It's very important, not just body, mind, but your soul. This, as you get older, you will understand too. You know, old people like to say this, as you get older, as you get older. Uh, do not wait for permission to change something that you care about. Never let fear get in your way. Never be fearful. It's okay to fail. Who cares? Fail. You will succeed. You learn from failure. One more thing that I want to advise you is think outside the box. We are the Singaporean kids, yeah? And we always think inside the box because we are structured that way. Open up your mind. Explore. There's always different answers to get to the solution. You agree? No? Yeah? Okay, so next. So currently, I'm going to start where, where I am at the present and then we go back to where I was. So Platopia. So you guys know about um, kids indoor playground, right? Uh, like polywalks, kids mania. Okay. So Platopia is my first, um, my own kids indoor playground that will be launching at uh, our Tampanese hub soon. Um, yeah, so, so Platopia, so I wanted a name that, um, so we're still working on the, what do you call it, the, the logo. So I wanted to have a girl in a boxing, with a boxing glove, but at the moment she looks like a rabbit with ears. <laughs> So I also have, I wanted a, a boy to play skipping rope. Not because, I, you know, I think I associate it with being um, girly, but boxers use skipping rope, right? So we have to think outside the box. And if you see the small A, it's a kid in a wheelchair. So my place, the, my dream, my vision, vision, so you have to have a vision. My vision is to create a playground, indoor playground, that all kids can come and play together and not be uh, different. Because I know what it's like to be different. I was bullied as a little girl at school because I was too dark, I, I don't fit um, in, in society. I, I was always picked by school teachers because, you know, whatever, I don't know where, where, I, where I was. I thought I was a good, uh, was a good kid. So, um, I also, also believe in turning everything that's bad into positivity and paying it forward. So the lesson learned here is your vision and reality has to be one. So, but also, like I said, think outside the box. Sometimes your, your vision, you have a vision, you go like, okay, this is the way. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. You have to be flexible. You have to find solution. So the secret is to stay, stay true to the vision. I am blind to, I'm sorry. I can't even read my own handwriting. Stay true to your vision. Uh, Always surround yourself with people of the same mindset. If people are negative, try to stay away from them. There's a lot of them, you know. And having said that, don't be a negative person yourself. You can, you can be down a little bit once in a blue, but not all the time. So how many of you know people that are downers? I call them Debbie Downers. Don't point to your friends. <laughs> So besides the indoor, I'm really excited, to, it's beside the indoor playground, what I intend to do is to introduce three programs. One is called the Titan, Titans Race. I want kids to start playing outside. 
So my fitness program, I have hired a para-athlete that's going to lead this, uh, this kids between 8 to 10 years old. So I want kids to be inspired. I want kids to mix around and say, hey, you know what? We are all the same. So once you put a face to the name, you will, you will feel you get to know a person, not as you know, a generic, but somebody that you know heart to heart. I want also to introduce urban gardening. I want kids to start touching the soil. We, we are all the kids of uh, children of antibiotics. I believe we, we go outside, you build your immune system. I want kids to play together and not feel alone. And the other one is the silver, silver age. I call it silver spoon um, introduction program. I want to take kids to visit the older generation to learn from them. So they have a, te a theme that day. So these are my visions for Playtopia. So I'm currently also running my own um, talk show. Um, it's called Live by Lila. Today is my 10th show on Facebook Live. So you guys are all on it. If the girls will take it um, and, and spin it around. So I wanted, I approach TVs. So I was too controversial. I speak about taboo subjects. Nobody wants to touch me. <laughs> So, I, um, my programs, I'm going to give you two of my, my favorite programs. Uh, one is, I name it, How to Be a Shitty Parent. So I had three kids on my show. One uh, who is abandoned by parents, and one is a divorced uh, child, and one of still intact family. The reason I have three different kids on my show is to show how does it affect their life in their, their future, in the relationship. And last week I had Wesley Can or Wesley Wee, I'm not sure whether he's apparently very famous. Uh, this guy has severe cerebral palsy and he was abused as a child by his own parents. And the most amazing thing about Wesley, he wrote a book and it took him five years with his toes. How amazing is that? And one thing that inspired me about Wesley is he has no chip on his shoulder. He's still very positive. I mean, this guy went truly uh, brutally abused when he was growing up. So let's talk about how this show came about. So like I said, you know, no TV program wants to touch me because I'm, I'm too outspoken. So I remember two years ago, I met up my friend uh, Bill, Bill Calhoun, he's a very famous guy in Singapore. He does dance on TV, you know, dance with me on something, dance on the floor or something. So I told him two years ago, hey, listen, you know, I want to do this TV show. Uh, and he goes like, why? I said, I want to give people uh, a voice, you know. Uh, he says, is it women? I said, no, I, I don't believe in gender. Uh, I believe in human equality, so I want to give people a chance to voice out. Um, I want to talk about my own experiences, and maybe you guys have similar experiences. So two years later, he says, hey, listen, do it on Facebook Live. So now I'm on my 10th show. Uh, if you are 17, do not watch it. 18 and above is okay. Lah. <laughs> okay. So going down, so, so we are going down, okay? So Fitness Best Asia Awards. So I was approached by a couple of people. Uh, they had this idea. So most of our fitness industry and programs comes from the, the Western side, right? So I've been in, in fitness for 20 years and I'm so proud being an Asian. I'm like, hey, it's time, man. So I was employed as a technical director and I put together uh, the categories. I also have to have a twist. I didn't want to do the expo. I didn't want to do the seminar, come and talk and listen to, you know, that's been done. How can we make it different? I integrated fitness and sports together. I was very adamant about uh, acknowledging and honoring not only the fitness uh, individuals, fitness facilities, but our sportsmen, especially our para-athlete. So that's the para, uh, sorry, the vanguard is for Singapore based. So it was a success, nevertheless. So that's me, the technical director. A bit fat here, they expanded my picture somehow. <laughs>
So I've, I put together seven honorable judges, and one of them is Diane Haslam. She's the, she's the CEO of FISAF Singapore. She's very well known, and if you are in bodybuilding, guys, you know who Adi Rai is. Do you know Adi Rai? Okay, so Adi Rai is a very famous individual from Indonesia. So he's, he's also the most kindest man that I know, and he's giving back to community. Okay, this one you guys better know. Alex Yong. Okay, so, okay. So Alex Yong is one of my, my old friends. So he's a Formula One driver uh, of Malaysia. So when I pitch this, this uh, event to them, and they go like, wow, you know, it's the first time in Asia, let's do it, you know. Uh, so this event was a huge su success. So we've got people flying, um, flying all over to come for this event and we made it a twist where we did not do it in a convention center we did it at Zook so we did it at Zook so you see people with fitness comes together relax because most of the time we sit down we listen to to coaches or, or you know lecturers and nobody is relaxed so we wanted to bring our fitness people together to get to know one another acknowledge honor them and they, it's about time that we put Asia on, on the map. So we have Teresa Go, you know she's a para-athlete of the year, and Saida, she's a rower. Uh, let's see, let's go through what else. So Ben Xiao is the personal trainer of the year, male. Mind you guys, these are all the candidates. We had hundreds of submissions all over Asia. So we had to cut it down to eight in every Categories. So there were 20 categories. Grace, uh, Sam is from Malaysia. And that's our celebration. It was so great to have our own people under one roof celebrating our success. And that's my aim. And there are other stuff that's coming up from Fitness Best Asia Awards that is going to be slightly different, I, I would like to think. Okay, so here we come to gym creation. I, without the mentors and the people that I've met um, in my life, nothing is possible. So I have to say that in my life, I, had, I met this gentleman, Christopher Norton. He was the COO of Four Seasons and he gave me a chance uh, by taking a risk to let me explore uh, gym creation. Um, this is my first, first gym of Four Seasons, uh, Lambda Giravaru. And till today, it's still intact. I did this probably eight, nine years ago. I changed the mindset of designing gyms for hotels because I understand, I understood the market. So I understand the demographics. I took, I took away from normally at hotels, uh, the gyms were in the basement, right? There's no light, there's no mirror, it was boring, stuck, white lights. So I changed that concept. So I gave life, every gym that I did has a theme. So seven, eight years later, the equipment is still intact. I put the best of the best under one roof. This is a boutique gym in uh, Dubai, DIFC. So I did the Jumeirah and DIFC. So the smaller the gym, the more difficult it is. So I have to work with architects and designers to know, you know the lighting and where to put the equipment, the safety wise. In Asia, it hasn't caught up yet for the Disability Act because we don't have that ADA. We don't have any gym, you know, any equipment you can put next to each other, but not in the US, not in, the, in, in Europe. You have to follow certain rules. So this is the Philadelphia one that I did. So everything has to go with a theme and work together with, you know, um, architects. So let's see, the, the lesson learned for this. <laughs> There's so many lessons to be learned. Um, hang on a second. Okay. So they say success has many parents. Failure is an orphan. Um, I'm very lucky that I'm not an orphan because I have so many people that help me through the journey. So like Christopher Norton, Diane Hasla, my good friend Rosalind, um, and many others like Sharona who was the one who took me 
under her wings and, and taught me when I started personal training. So with this, I had, in any industry, I hate to be very gender biased. Um, I believe in gender equality. I am dealing with, in the fitness industry, so mostly they are men. Um, so I had a conference call with men, I was the only woman, and I'm very hot-blooded, and I don't, I don't hold my tongue very well, but you know, I've always been on my own. I've never worked with company and teams. So when I worked with Fitness Best, that was my first, first team. I had to sit down and everybody go, whoa, welcome to the team, and I died. I literally died inside. I go like, I can't, I can't work with a team. Not because I think I know it all, because it's so much hard work. You have to you know, adapt to everybody else. And I want to be a good leader. I don't want to be a leader that just think that, you know, you're dumb, you know, there's uh, no such thing. Like my interns that are uh, sitting here when they come on board, I told them, I said, listen, there's no stupid question. There's only stupid people, right? So don't be afraid to ask questions. This is how we learn. So anyways, um, so where was I? See, train of thought, gone. Okay, so I have to adapt to learn, um, learn dealing with people. And there's so many remarks as a woman in this industry that it, it changes. Like for example, when I was in Dubai dealing with an uh, equipment dealer, um, they pick me up and they go like, wow, you know, you look great. They say, oh, thank you so much. And they go like, well, you look better uh, on top of me, which is, I go like, what? You know, so all those things, I know that it's not appropriate, but in, you also have to adapt when you are in the Middle East, you have to know your place. So like Ms. Didi said, you have to know culturally, you have to be worldly. How do you deal with all this? Um, so the, so far I've designed 16 gyms of Four Seasons worldwide, homes in Spain, New Zealand, uh, Brunei, and in Singapore. So it started from being a personal trainer. So that's one of my clients, if you can't put clients' pictures up. So he made a t-shirt for me. I have a whole bunch of clients that are high net networking, net network. I, I train the Prince of Brunei, I train and family, I train uh, Princess of India, uh, I train, you know, the regular you and me. Do, do I treat them any different? No, I think I treat them with a lot of respect. I think once you understand um, that you have to respect people, everything will, will come in its place. Uh, know your boundaries, um, be professional. Um, so here you have me teaching uh, Landa Giravaru, and as you can see, I was young and foolish, I was blonde. <laughs> so be besides being a personal trainer, I'm also an aerobics instructor. Uh, that's me doing a mass workout. So I open all doors, I don't say no to it. I don't just put myself in one box. So I do a lot of different things, but you have when you go out and do many things, make sure you give 100% in whatever, whatever you do. If you do not like what you do, do not do it, because you are not doing people justice. Uh, for aerobics, I wanna to touch on this. I have a fear of water, but because I have to um, teach my client, I put my fear aside and I jump into the pool. You won't, you won't know it, but that's um, a magazine, so I had, to, I had time to pose and, you know. So I'm also a wellness motivational speaker, whatever that means, I do not know. Um, so I've spoken in Indonesia and kids uh, in school, 60 schools, uh, secondary schools, and about 30 schools uh, in primary schools all over Singapore. So before I touch on that, um, the success that you see, they kick the world hurdles also for me. I've got so many people telling me, uh, you know, the way you look, you know, everybody, if I die, I want to become like you the next time when I come back in life. Um, you know, the way you look, and I say, yeah, you know, the way I look will put my foot in the door. At the end of the day, when somebody uh, gets you the job, gives you the job, you have to produce. That's it, point blank. No, but you're not a model, you're not, they're not paying you for, for modeling. They pay, pay you to get results, whether it's in personal training, aqua aerobics, or gym design. So you, you better deliver what you are being, um, being hired for. 
So yes, I have been in media, not as many as Miss Didi. <laughs> so I've been in Straits Times, um, magazines, uh, Japanese um, magazine, uh, men's health, you know. Um, the reason I'm, I'm being approached is because I have to write articles. When, when I'm being asked to write articles, I always deliver by the end of the night, at the end of the day. I don't wait, wait for a week. Um, I believe in performance. I believe in uh, giving 100%. Um, so this is the most difficult part of my life, which is still going on. I'm a single parent um, for the last 17 years. So these are my girls. Um, yeah, it's still going on. Um, so my two girls are now 21 and 23. So, 21, 23. I want to, I want to emphasize on, on this because I know you guys out there, um, you 17 to 20 years old, uh, you do not know where you are going with your life. I, I know 50 year olds still don't know where they, they're going with their life. My daughter, uh, Zabira, who's 23, she, both of them are studying in the US. They've studied in Singapore for the longest time. Uh, then I sent them off to, to the US because I could. I believe in education. I believe that girls, you, you guys have better opportunities than us, uh, than my parents. Uh, she, she was crying because she goes like, oh my God, mommy, you know, you, you got your life together. You know, you have traveled around the world. You know, you meet, meet so many people. And I go like, but you know, Xaviera, um, you know, I think that stop trying to figure out your career. The most important thing is to figure out who you are. Meaning, are you trustworthy? Are you hardworking? Are you loyal? If this, th there's so many other good qualities, but if these three things, if you are, Doors will open up. Like I said, if you don't like what you do, please leave. There's somebody else that's deserved that position. So my kids, um, you know, when, when they were growing up, there's a lot of people will tell you no. People will say, don't do it. You know, um, I believe before even I got pregnant um, to make sure my kids can speak Mandarin and read Mandarin. So we are not, we're not Chinese. So the schools would tell me, no, you know, it's so unfair because, you know, you guys don't speak Mandarin. How can you ask your children to speak Mandarin? So I say, well, most Chinese Singaporeans don't speak Mandarin at home, speak English. So why would I deny my kids that opportunity? So my kids went from, four, they are four years old to, what, 16, 16 years old. Their second language at school is Mandarin. I forced them, they were very lucky they got into red swastika. This is the typical Singaporean pride, right? Uh, red swastika, they were the only 2% that were non-Chinese and they were the top of their, their school because they don't take it for granted. So finding Lila. I was once 17, 18, 19, 20. I know, it's unbelievable. I have done so many uh, jobs like unit trust manager, I hated it. Uh, I was a talent scout uh, for a modeling agency. It's okay, I enjoyed it. Uh, production assistant, I love that job. So I worked for a production uh, company that were Hugh Harrison, Harrison Green, that's what it's called. They did um, the first, I think first or third, We Are Singapore song. Do you remember that? Do you know that song? We are Singapore, Singaporean. Okay, okay. So, so I was a production assistant. You know what I did was to look for location. And I would sit at the back of a truck looking for location. I loved it because, you know, it gives me freedom. And I, I, I love the, the freedom that it gave me and to be creative. I was a model when I was 17, uh, 18. I lived in Japan for two years. I was foolish, I made a lot of money. I spent it all. Uh, this was before the bubble burst. I didn't enjoy modeling, but it got me somewhere. I got out of modeling because I didn't enjoy it anymore. 
I think modeling is one of the hardest jobs for me because I'm the laziest pig ever. I hate washing my face with makeup, put, you know, uh, cream and wash your hair because there's, you know, uh, what do you call it, hairspray. I got out, I wasn't good, I wasn't good at it. Um, my point for this is, you know, I think if you keep going and don't just focus yourself, I mean, you need structure, believe me, you need structure, but please don't be so hard on yourself. Find who you are first before trying to find what you do. Be really very honest about yourself. If you are lazy, you're lazy. Do something about it. Okay? But don't ever lose that experience because anybody that you meet will teach you something. Never lose that experience. You guys are so lucky. If I had the opportunity, like you guys, and all these experts come and sit and talk to you, I will be so hungry listening and learning and maybe passing it forward later on. So enough about that. So this is once upon me. Surprise, surprise. This is not my house like I found it on Google. Okay. <laughs> so this is where I come from, something like this. I come from a village, uh, Paya Leba, believe it or not. This is where I was carefree. And I am a Malay. Yes, yes. That's why they want to say, you know, I'm, I, I said I'm Singaporean. I am a Malay. I'm, a, I'm very proud of who I am. Um, I am proud because these two people are my creator. So my mother has always worked. My mother has always worked. My father was a, a sergeant major in, in the army. Yes, um, you know, he, I've always thought that my father was a very, very strong man, you know, I've always admired my father, but now as my father, you know, grows old, I think I admire my mother more. I come from a sibling, uh, I have, there's nine of us, yeah, uh, there's nine of us and eight were girls and the last one is a boy, uh, so being Asian, you know, boys are the king of the house. So my mother, you know, wanted to have a son, so he, she had a son. The values that my parents instilled in me, I will never forget. Never forget where you come from. No matter how much I travel, I travel every once, uh, once every month, uh, once every two months, whatever. I, and I've been to beautiful places, but nothing beats home. Um, you know, um, I, I'm very proud of my roots. I'm very proud that I'm Singaporean first. I'm very proud I'm a Malay. I'm also, also very proud that we, as a society of Singapore, can get along, you know, in, in harmony. So this is a bit like, you know, Singapore speech, President, uh, President Halima Yaakob, no, it's not, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, so this, this is me. Um, I believe you are a painter of your life. I believe what you create is up to you. You are, you hold your own destiny. Um, you know, I didn't know at two, at four, and at, at 11 or whatever age. I moved to the HDB when I was 13 years old. So all my life was in the kampong, playing outside, being free. There was no stress because education was not the most important thing. Correct? Right. But now it is important, but you guys have got, got a lot more selection. So, so this is me, a bit of, uh, you know, um, I'm still painting. I don't know where, where it will lead me. I am 50 years old. This picture was taken for my birthday celebration last year at 49 years old. Um, there are many obstacles still. Okay, maybe I should forward this picture. Okay. <laughs> So, there, there are many obstacles in this life, but, but, it can only work for me, it might not work for you. For me, I only allow myself to be unhappy for three, three days. I always am the creator of solutions than looking at problems. Are we still talking about she 50? Okay. <laughs> Okay, yes, I am 50. Uh, I'm very proud because 
because I think now, you know, being 50, only old people talk about their age, you know, young people go like, yeah, hey, you're old, we don't care. Um, I think that because of health and fitness, if you take care of yourself, you will be able to live a lot uh, longer and healthier. On that note, the only thing that I, I if I, I have to remind you guys, those are the three things that, three things. Make sure you stay relevant, market yourself well, be truthful, do not cheat, do not lie. People will find out one day. Don't bother, okay? Evolve in your fitness industry, stay relevant. Shh. Okay. So on that note, um, that's my website if you, and my email address if you want to ask any question, I would love to. Uh, thank you for your time and I'm sure that you all can put water and wash your face. Thank you very much, Lila.